Hello, dear friends. You old Humphreys here. Glad to share another word with you. May the Lord bless you today. I hope and pray that you know the Lord, that you believe in him, in spite of difficulties, in spite of problems, that you believe that he's there and he loves you. He's never going to leave you. Hallelujah. I'm reading, I'm, I'm rather speaking uh, you know, in this little video on uh, the fact that we need to honor our parents. And I don't know that I've ever heard a sermon on that, but I think it's a good thing. I, I noticed a little article the other day on honoring parents, and I think it's a good thought. We need to honor our parents. One of the, uh, the admonition to honor parents is in, found in the Ten Commandments. It's found in the Fifth Commandment. The first five are toward the Lord God, toward worshiping Him, not buying down to idols, but looking to Him and Him alone as the Lord God, Creator and Sustainer, and praise God, our Redeemer. And then the next, the last five begins with honoring father and mother. And so it is the first promise of the 10 that, that gives us a promise. And that is that we'll live long upon the land. And of course there are some exceptions, but uh, this is a great truth. And so we need to see this. May the Lord bless it to your hearts. I imagine most of you that are listening, your parents have maybe already gone on. Mine have years ago. But praise God, I still thank God for them. I still remember them. And I thank God that I had the privilege to be one of their children. I was one of eight. And I thank God that the Lord brought us together. And that uh, he gave us the parents that he did. Even at times when we were growing up and I didn't feel like they were the right parents. But praise God. Uh, we, we did get things straightened out and we be, became one family. The uh, Bible teaches us that, that it's a good thing to honor parents. Honor father and mother. Honor them because you owe them your life. It was aiding you all and half is because you were born of your parents, your father and your mother. And it's very important that you know that they are those uh, two people that are really your friends. They're standing by you, and they love you, and they're going to stay there. And they will always be there when you need them. Usually, this is the case. And so I pray, God, it's your case. And I pray, God, that right now, that it may be you that will be able to pray for your parents. And if they've gone on, and you didn't live as you should before them, then praise God, you can start living as best you can even after they're dead, in honor of them. And so, praise God, I want to say that number one, you should, of course, love your parents. You should love them because they've given you life. You should love them because they mean more to you than anybody else around on the streets. You ought to honor them because they are honoring you. They have given you life. And they have sustained you as you grew up as a child. As you grew up and, and depended on somebody to feed them and to clothe them. And so they were dependent upon parents. And so you need to look to, to, uh, to the parents and give them honor. How do you give them honor? By loving them. You give them honor by giving them some time. Give them a little time. I have to confess, I didn't give my parents much time. They were, uh, the time I was born, I was born the, the last child of eight. At the time, by the time I was born, my parents both were getting rather old. And I thought they were completely out of, out of kelter for a long while until the Lord woke me up. And so it says what we need to honor father and mother. Honor them because God honors them. He has allowed them to give you birth and to bring you into this world. And I thank God for that. I'm thanking God that you're in this world and you're here by the grace of God. And one day you're going home to be in heaven forever. We'll never have to, 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 uh, to fear the, 
the fires of hell. We're going home to heaven where God waits to be gracious. I wish you'll walk in light forever. I wish you'll love our parents up there like we should have done down here. Amen. And so let it be ours to honor father and mother. I remember, I remember the story of Moses when he was born, uh, Pharaoh of Egypt sent out an order to kill all the little boys because he had heard that there was one that was born that was to be king in Israel. And that would be Jesus, according to the scriptures. And so he ordered them. And, uh, and Moses' mother took, the, took Moses and put him in a little basket and set him on the Nile's river and said, God bless you. And, and uh, so there was a terrible death to a, a number of children killed in that day by, by Pharaoh because he, he was jealous of the fact that there might be another king in Egypt. And so, in other words, uh, Moses was placed in the basket and set out on the river and figured that he'd never see, be seen again. But he was seen by some women of Egypt that were down at the lake and they take that little baby out of the basket and one of the women there was Pharaoh's daughter. And so Pharaoh said, well, I'll keep that baby and somebody has sent it away to, to, for it to die. I'll keep it myself and I'll raise it in, in, in the castle. And uh, so she said, I need to get somebody to be able to raise him. And so they went through the country and found it. Who do you think they found? They found Moses' mother. And they asked her to take the baby. And she says, yes, yes, yes. And she was able to raise her child. What a wonderful miracle. And so it is that we read it. We are to honor father and mother. Honor both of them. Because they love you and they need, need your cooperation. Try to obey your parents. They know more than you do. And, it, and usually, usually, not always, but usually, they're pretty close to right thing to do for you to do it. They're thinking about your good and they're thinking about what can be done and should be done. And so honor father and mother. When Jesus was nailed to that cross, dying for you and me, paying for our sins. When he was dying, he looked out at the crowd and there stood his mother and another woman named Mary, who was the wife of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene. And there was with them the, the apostle John. And so Jesus looked out at them and he said to, the, to Mary, he said, woman, behold your son. He was giving her to John to take care of. And then he looked at it at John and he said, he said, look, son, look at your mother. Behold your mother and take care of her. And from that day, John took care of Mary's mother. And so it was that before he died on that cross, he gave a lease. He gave a permanent he gave a permanent, permanent uh, pardon, I mean a permanent uh, uh, arrangement for, for John to take care of. And so we need to take care of our mothers and fathers. They are so important. They are so very important. And so I praise God. But most of all, we need to put Jesus number one. He needs to come before mother or father. He needs to come before children. He needs to come before your own life. That's what he said. He said that the mothers and fathers must humble themselves and come before me. And then also brethren. And he said also all the children must come before me. If you'll be my disciple, you must allow me to be first one in your life. And so let Jesus be Come the number one in your life today. Look to him, believe in him, and know that the day is coming when you're going to stand before him. Oh, praise God. Believe in him now, and you shall be saved. Now, I want you to pray a brief prayer with me. And the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want you to call upon me now. 
I want you to call upon me and ask me for mercy and grace. I'm going to save you right now in the name of Jesus. And we pray like this. Oh, Father God, in Jesus' name, I'm praying forgiveness. Forgive me, Lord, of every sin in my life. Forgive me, Lord. I'm praying to you. I'm talking to you. I want you to know that I am lost. I need help. And I'm asking you to come in my heart and be the Lord of my life. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again. And I believe you're coming back. Come in my heart, Lord Jesus. Help me live for you. Amen and amen. And if you're a Christian, you can pray and say, Lord God, you're number one in my life. Lord Jesus, you are first place. You are there where nobody else can ever reach because you're my Lord and my God. Amen. God bless you. Find your good church and worship God with his people. And may the Lord bless you and honor your parents. Amen and amen.